Muslim children join their parents in fasting for Ramadan. I don't want to spend much time on the multiple choice questions because they're very easy. Number four, though, I searched and searched and searched and never could find the age five listed anywhere, but that is the correct answer. It's the youngest age, uh, and everybody else in those age groups seem to be doing it. So all the rest of them I found very easily, or just use logic. I do want to talk about the essay. Uh, there is the connection in your introduction. You're going to have four paragraphs, all right? And tab the paragraph, but put in some extra space between them so I can easily identify your four paragraphs. If not, I'm taking points off right away for organization. If you want to type it in a Google Doc and then paste it, and then, uh, in, 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 cause you can do this, you can type it in Google Docs, paste it into Think Circa because it needs to be there. They're all analyzing what we're writing. And, but you can upload it on Google Classroom and I can grade both of them. You know, I can get a look at it on a document style and that other method. Your first paragraph is your introduction. And I want you to use the connection as your lead, as your hook. Explain your family's favorite holiday tradition. Because Ramadan is a holiday tradition for Muslims. It's a, it's a practice. And so to get into the idea of that, you're going to give a personal background. Uh, in my family, on Christmas Eve, we all go to my sister's house. My father reads the nativity story from the Bible, and we all get to pick one package and open it. Uh, that's our tradition. It's changed over the years because uh, now we draw names. I hate this tradition. And so you only get one present. And uh, so the opening of one present on Christmas Eve has become, okay, we're opening our presents on Christmas Eve. Uh, but that's our tradition. And then I'm going to transition into the Ramadan tradition. And my transition is going to explain what it is. And I can use the summary part. You know, they give you some sentence stems to fill. And then there, the prompt that they give us to write about says, um, what are the implications of the Ramadan tradition for Muslim children? And that's an odd way to phrase it. But the question that you're going to answer is, is it good or bad for school-aged children to practice Ramadan? And when you highlight, you highlight the positives and you highlight the negatives. And then you're going to decide which one do you agree with? Is practicing their religion? Because they go without eating for quite a while. And in the, the Houston Rockets had a player named Akeem Olajuwon. And he practiced Ramadan during his basketball season. So he was going without eating and trying to play basketball. Um, and some argued you know, that's going to affect your game. And he said, well, this is my religion. This is more important than a basketball game. So, as you read, you're looking for positives and negatives, and the highlighting part says to do that. So, your claim is going to be, and I'm simplifying this, either it's okay, it's good for them to practice it, or it's not good for them. Once you've picked one of those, in your claim, you can put a couple of reasons. We teach that in middle school. Uh, it is okay for young children to practice Ramadan because one, two, three, or one and two. Then you're going to write a paragraph supporting your opinion with facts from the text. And you're going to have a paragraph on the opposite side. You can't just say, now some people think uh, children practicing Ramadan is a bad idea or good idea, depending on whatever is the opposite of you. But they're wrong. You have to explain why they think that. You have to explain the other side. And then finally, in your conclusion, you're going to wrap this up. Your conclusion is going to be pretty brief. 
And that's where you begin with, uh, you know, even though they think this, the benefits outweigh the negatives, or the negatives outweigh the benefits. And then conclude by restating your thesis. That just means write it again. It means actually to restate it, state it differently. Okay? And so that's what I, that's what I want to see. The, the multiple choice is easy. Highlight the pros and cons described in the article. Begin your essay with your uh, holiday practices, whether it's Easter, whether you have Thanksgiving traditions, Christmas traditions, uh, you know, whatever it might be. And then, and you can decide the order. You can put the support for your thesis first, which I think would make sense if you say having kids practice Ramadan is not a good idea, then tell why. And say, now some people disagree. And in the article it says, da 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 da. Then your conclusion, but, and then you defend yourself, and then you wrap it all up. Easy peasy. Okay? This is what you need to practice. Writing good essays that are organized, that have clear, because that, those paragraphs help your reader transition. And then having textual support. Alright? You've got two weeks to do this. The first week, though, I want to see two things. The multiple choice and your connection typed in that box. And then this into the second week, I'll read your essays. All right? Thumbs up.